Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool. And in this video we're going to have a look at Blender's most powerful relationship tool and nicely it's all included in Blender as standard. So before we get started, what do we mean by a relationship tool? Well, a relationship tool is anything in Blender where it's going to allow one object to be controlled by the characteristics of another in some way. The most simple version of this, if I click and shift click and press Control and P, is to set a parent. Now what this means is that for this object, anytime it moves, so if I press G and move it, the other object will move with it. Even though they're separate objects, the location of one is controlling the location of another. And that's very simple with parenting and Control and P. However, we might want to do other things. And we can't do that necessarily with parenting. For example, I might want to be able to move this one, but it only affects the other object in one of the directions, not the other. And this is really important. Say, for example, I'm doing something like riveting and I want to add things and make them look really nicely spaced. I want to be able to shift and D and duplicate it and then just G and move one up, but not the other to keep them perfectly in line. Or I might have, let's say, this object here and I might want to be able to change the array and also affect the array of the other object as well. And I might want that array to constantly be perfectly centered between the other two just to make my life a lot quicker and easier and know that everything is exactly perfect in its locations. And for this, we use a relationship manager called a driver. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this video today. And we'll have a look at how to set up both of these because they're actually very easy to do. So let's have a look at how this is going to work. I'm going to shift an A, mesh and bring in a quad sphere. I'm going to shift and D and then move this on the Y axis. So somewhere to here. Now, the way this is going to work is that we want to relate one location. So I'm going to come to item and we've got the location information to the other one. Let's just G and bring that along in the X so we can see when this starts working. In fact, I'll G and that along in the X as well. So our X location isn't just zero. So what I want to do is for my cube two, relate this X location to cube ones. So I'm going to come to cube one and we're not just going to copy and paste because that will only do it immediately where it is. Instead, we're going to right click on it and we're going to click copy as a new driver, which means that it's constantly going to evaluate where cube one is. Click on cube two, come to the X, right click and then just click paste driver. Now you can see it's turned purple and they are the same, but they're not only the same. If I move cube one, it will now move cube two keeping the X the same, but any other variable can be different. Now, importantly, this will work not just with location, but rotation, scale, and pretty much anything else you want it to work with. The only one you can't get it to work with is the dimensions, which is a little bit frustrating, but you can then go through geometry nodes to do that. It's just one of the limitations on drivers. And what's really nice about this is if I shift and D to make a duplicate, this will automatically work out that it wants to swap this or keep this to work between these two because we duplicated them at the same time. Now to do anything more complicated with this, we sort of need to know what's going on in the background. So I'll shift an A mesh and let's bring in a cylinder. Let's scale that up a bit. And let's move that over to here and then let's shift and D and bring that over here. We've got our cylinder here and cylinder one there. I'm just for the sake of simplicity, gonna rename this so F2 and call this cylinder A and then I'm gonna call this F2, and we'll call this cylinder B, just so they're easier to look at. So let's have a look at what's gonna go on in the background. And in the background, this is relatively similar to a spreadsheet. So I've got a very zoomed in version of Google Sheets here. And let's say I put in a value in cell B2 of six. I can come over to any other cell and press equals, and then say I want it to equal what B2 is. So I can type in B2 or click, hit enter, and now it will equal six. Now I could also, let's come over to cell A2 over here and put in a value of five. I could, so I want actually something more complicated. I want to work out an average of B2 plus A2 divided by two. And that will give me the average between either of them. And I could always change this to let's say three and it will do the maths automatically. This is very similar to what drivers in Blender are doing in the background. It's just relating one point to other points. And I'm a bit of a geek, so I love spreadsheets. So this is a lot of fun to me. 
So let's have a look at how this is working in the background. What I'm going to do is come to cylinder B and for this time we'll do the Y location. I'm going to add a driver and that gives us this. Now at the moment we've got our expression. That's the maths and this is going to be wrong when we do this straight away. So we'll have to fix it at that point. At the moment it's got no variable which it calls VAR and it's just adding where it already was to keep it on point. I'll also say if you take your mouse off of this it disappears you can actually open the driver editor and you get this and you get your formula over here and you can always start moving around with this so that's an option as well if you want to i'm just going to stick with the edit driver option so what we want to do is tell this where to look at so we want this to look at the object cylinder a so i've now got cylinder a and you'll notice it's disappeared because at the moment it's got that plus this long number which is where it was originally. So I'm going to delete that. And now this should work, except for it's currently looking at the X location. We'll change this to Y location. And now it's working correctly. So I can now move this around. And because this variable is changing on this one, it is changing as well. Now, what we can also do if we want to is rename this and not call this var. We could call this, I don't know, let's say, for example, cylinder a so now this will say it's not going to work so we'll ignore it because we need to copy this and put it as the expression and we can always do other things we could say let's say plus two and now it's going to be two further on or minus six and now it's six less on that y axis and you can see at the top that it's the y location it tells us where this is working now where this becomes really powerful is you can also let's just bring in a cone so that's g and then S that up there. So what we could also do is involve that cone. So let's right click, edit driver. We want to add a new variable. We're gonna change this from single property to transform channel. Now this will actually work with both of them. The difference being the single property just takes the basic value. Whereas the transform channel also takes into account things like constraints and other things that you might have set up. I would just use transform channel. If you want me to give some examples of that in the future, let me know in the comments so I can always work that out. We're gonna call this variable cone, and then we want this also in the Y location. And then we're gonna choose this to work on the cone. So we've picked our object, picked what it's working off of, and now we could just come to here. So what I want is cylinder A, we're gonna need to put this in brackets, plus cone divided by two, and now it's perfectly in the middle. And if I move this one, it works. And if I move this one, it also works. So it will work off either of them. Now, just as a side note, actually I did that in a way that I didn't necessarily need to, because as well as scripted expressions, we can also use other things. So for example, I could have just used an average and just say I want an average of the cylinder A and the cone in the Y direction, and that would work. So I didn't have to work out the formula for an average myself. So there's lots of other expressions you can do, like sum, minimum value, maximum value. So you could look at several objects and do whatever's lowest or highest, and that will work really nicely. So let's set up the example that I did earlier where we had an array. So let's get rid of all of these and have a look at a more complicated example. So I'm gonna bring in an icosphere just so it's really easy to see. Let's make sure we apply the scale because this could cause a problem if we don't and then I'm just gonna shift and D and we're gonna bring in a second one. So we've got icosphere one and icosphere two. So what we're gonna do is click here, add a modifier and bring in an array. And we don't want this to be relative. Constant is probably a lot easier to work out here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for here, add an array and we'll call this constant. And we'll just move it somewhere so we can see it. So the first thing we want to do is have our count be the same. So simply, I'm gonna to come to count, right click, copy as new driver, come to the other one, count, paste as new driver. And now if I up the count on this one, it will up the count on the other one. I also want the offset to be the same. So let's right click, copy as new driver, and here, and then paste as new driver. So now our distance and our count are controlled by one of them. But now we want this to be halfway between these two, and that's gonna get a bit more complicated. Effectively, we're saying, take this location here, so on the X-axis, and then I want you to add to that 
half of this distance. So x plus d divided by 2 is what we want overall. Forgive the poor writing. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. So following our logic, we're going to need this location on the x. And luckily, we've got the distance between these two because we've got our constant distance. So I'm going to come to here. I'm going to go to my x location, right click and add a driver. And the first thing we want to do is pick that we want icosphere 1. And we don't want to add all of this. So let's just keep it as variable. I'm going to rename this as x just because that's the way I wrote it on the equation. So we'll have x. Then we need to add in a new variable. So add a variable and we want this time it will be a single property and I'm going to pick my icosphere 1. Then it says path. Now the path is what where to look. It's like the cell that we used in Google Sheets. So what I need to do is come to icosphere 1. So we'll come here, right click and I want to copy the data path. Not the full data path for some reason, just the data path. Then I can come here, right click, edit driver. I've already selected my icosphere. Let's control and V that information. And you can tell it's working because it's telling you the value that we're trying to look at. So if I come back here, the value was 34 point something. And now if I come to edit my driver, you can see that it's got that working. And then we just need to put this into our formula. I'm going to rename this D for distance, just like we did. And then I'm going to press plus D divided by 2. I don't need brackets because of standard mathematical equations, but you could do that if you want to. And suddenly it's perfectly in between. So I can now add our distance. I can also G and move this. Though it's, I've only set this up to work on the X axis. And it's going to keep it perfectly in between and then I can still change my count if I want to. So hopefully that's been useful to you. There is so much power contained within these drivers. The fact that we can link any function to any other function for any other object gives you so many possibilities for making what is essentially procedural setups without using things like geometry nodes and sometimes this is not something you can easily access in a geometry node. Though it would be very interesting if you could use those data paths for other objects in a geometry node. I'm going to have to start hunting through and see if that's possible, because that could be very interesting. But either way, I hope you found that useful and something that you might want to play around with. To quote one of the patrons, this may feel a bit too much like maths homework, so maybe this isn't for you, but I think this is absolutely brilliant. If you did find that useful, hitting the like button would be really appreciated. It helps share the video around. And if you do want to support the channel further, as mentioned, there is a Patreon for the channel and it gives you videos a week ahead of time, ad free and other great perks such as being on the channel Discord. Have a great day, guys.